This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Manhattan is an island. This geographic detail seems less important than it once did, as the rough wooden waterfronts shown in crinkling photographs have given way to glamorous financial services offices, high-end apartments, and stylish shops and restaurants. The waterfront, especially around Lower Manhattan, has become a fun place for tourists, joggers, business lunchers, and hand-holding couples. But hundreds of boats and barges continue to ply the waters around Manhattan. Tugs, the famous Circle Line sightseeing boats, dinner cruise boats, ferries, and other craft of every description form the background scenery for people standing on the shoreline looking out across New York Harbor. Beyond the fun and urban excitement is the workaday maritime world of diesel oil, coveralls, steel-toed shoes, and dirty gloves. The shift to commerce grounded in digital, virtual, and financial ephemera has not lessened the need for food and fuel around the city. These boats are not just decorative accessories placed on the waters to give tourists something to look at. They link the city to the regional, national, and global economies. New York City's maritime setting came into sharp relief during the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Anyone who watched television, read a paper, or fought through packed bandwidth to try to get on the Internet knows what happened. Early reports told of a small plane striking the North Tower, World Trade Center 1, at 8.46 a.m. In fact, as we would learn, this was not a small sightseeing plane, but rather American Airlines Flight 11, bound from Logan International Airport in Boston to Los Angeles. At 9.03 a.m., when United Airlines Flight 175, also en route from Boston to Los Angeles, struck the South Tower, World Trade Center 2, the hostile nature of the event became widely apparent. Over the course of the next hour, two more airplanes were hijacked. American Airlines Flight 77, en route from Dulles International Airport in Virginia to Los Angeles, struck the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m., and United Airlines Flight 93, en route from Newark International Airport to San Francisco, crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, when passengers tried to overpower the hijackers. In all, according to the 9-11 Commission report, a total of 2,973 were killed, excluding the hijackers. That morning, every eye and every camera in the world, it seemed, was focused on the glowing towers, and then, in turn, on their unbelievable collapses. Tower 2 at 9.59 a.m., and then Tower 1 at 10.28 a.m. And because most of us were watching the burning and disintegrating towers, and then the astounding shimmering cloud of dust, we missed something remarkable happening nearby, along the shoreline of Manhattan, from Chelsea Docks on the West Side Highway around to the Staten Island Ferry Terminal and up the eastern waterfront. Some people were not just watching the towers or watching the skies for more planes. Mariners' eyes move constantly, taking in the water, other boats, and the shoreline. And in that gaze, they saw a need they could help meet. Across New York Harbor, different ideas flashed like sparks, which ignited a collective understanding when boat operators and waterfront workers realized that they had the skills, the equipment, and the opportunity to take definitive, immediate action in responding to the most significant destructive event in the United States in decades. Their spontaneous convergence toward the downtown area succeeded in moving hundreds of thousands of evacuees from around the southern reaches of the island. On its own, this would be an amazing story, a Dunkirk-style evacuation in an improvised fleet, without any significant accidents. Indeed, several people whom we interviewed for this study specifically referred to the event as like Dunkirk, 
invoking reference to the successful 1940 evacuation of several hundred thousand soldiers from France over several days during World War II. But the remarkable story continues.